talking about something Salim Ali wrote about in um, 1961 in the newsletter for Indian Bird Watchers. He was actually talking about the peacock and he said that it was ridiculous that the peacock became the national bird when it should actually have been the great Indian bustard. And he said the great Indian bustard is this wonderful, magnificent bird, which is so big and uh, good looking, but um, it's also, also you know, uh, facing habitat loss. And so many years on, the great Indian bustard is something BNHS is trying to save. But uh, Mr. Salim Ali wrote in a very candid style. He wrote in a way that was very frank and confiding. But in all his writings and a lot of the pictures, as you see this one right here, he seemed to have a very um, emotional connect with his subject. So a lot of the photographs are like this. Uh, I hope you can see this image of him holding um, a little bird. And um, he, when we look at his pictures, we often see um, him actually looking through the binoculars or uh, holding a bird in his hand. And in many other photographs, we see him uh, looking and reading books and just being very scholarly. Apart from his love for nature, we also see that he was somebody who really believed in doing advocacy for birds and for nature. And this is really something that we take away as young conservationists. It was not just a pedantic love. It was not just um, a matter of scholarly inquiry. It was very much uh, a personal mission to make sure that the message for birds actually went uh, to uh, policy making and decision making. And we know that uh, Dr. Ali used every opportunity he got to to preach on um, on uh, conservation and nature. He received the Padma Vibhushan and he uh, used to try to also make BNHS grow as an organization. So this is uh, Mrs. Indira Gandhi, the, the prime minister who visited several times. Uh, and um, she took a lot of advice uh, from Mr. Ali on how where to make the sanctuaries. Bharatpur Bird Sanctuary owes its existence to Mr. Salim Ali. I don't know if, you know, I think there's a problem with the software, but on the right is a picture of, uh, I think you recognize this young man, Vittu Segal with uh, Salim Ali. And uh, that is um, on, the, on the left, that's Salim Ali speaking at the centenary function of BNHS. Another uh, set of pictures, this is, um, Dr. Emani on the right um, with Salim Ali and below the uh, picture at the bottom is Dylan Ripti with Salim Ali, both great ornithologists. Uh, we're very lucky to have some of these people with us here to speak. That's uh, Dilnava Zwarjava with Salim Ali. Uh, on the right is a photograph for, from Arunachal Pradesh. And that's Dr. Vijayan on the left. And uh, the picture on the right is taken by Belinda Wright in Sultanpur. She's going to talk a little bit about this a little later. And again, at the bottom, you have Subramanya. Dr. Subramanya is here with us. And uh, Dr. Asadzir Mani with Salim Ali. And here we have Robert Grubb. It's the photograph on the right. Again, uh, Mr. Grubb is here with us to talk to us today. But a very important part of all of this is really his fieldwork. And uh, many of us have grown up reading uh, Mr. Ali's books. And apart from his love for uh, nature and birds, he was also very detailed in his meticulous observations of everything that he saw around him. So this is an Andaman survey in the 1980s. And uh, there are many such pictures of him on boats, on land and deserts, with flamingos, on islands, etc., which are extremely inspiring for us today. Uh, this is Mr. Ali with the Sundalal Bahuguna, who is, of course, uh, a leading environmental activist known across the world. Uh, you know, his his work for saving trees became legend, became the step of legend across the world. I love this picture. This is the picture of a big long bayan nest and uh, you know uh, the, when we look through the archives of bnhs to find uh, you know images of mr ali we have these kind of images of him holding strange things or holding birds or you know trying to uh, you know take measurements 
And in every photograph, almost you see this childlike curiosity, you know, this insatiable curiosity, which I think it, I think that is what appeals to most people when they think about the bird man of India. It's not just his knowledge, but it's also this twinkle in his eye, uh, this uh, twinkle in his eye and kind of a spring in his step. This is him celebrating his birthday with uh, BNHS. And just a few more pictures. There were very small images, a few more pictures of his field work. The one in the middle is from Kashmir, going to Kashmir with this um, big car. So, you know, it's important for us at BNHS to take this legacy forward. You know, Mr. Ali said very uh, famously, he said, you know, I've done a lot. Now it is up to you all to take uh, my work forward. And BNHS is really determined to make sure that, you know, we have more nature champions amongst us. And uh, one thing that uh, Mr. Ali did is that he spoke in a voice that everybody could understand. That was the beauty of his advocacy and the beauty of his writing. It was very detailed, but extremely simple. He understood the meaning. He championed really the meaning of uh, having champions for nature everywhere. Um, and uh, th this is why very small children as well as older scholars both love and revere his work. We are also determined to make sure that BNHS um, reaches out more to members um, and uh, we want to continue advocating for science-based conservation. We also want to make sure that we focus on critically endangered birds but also on critically endangered ecosystems. Uh, Mr. Ali, of course, spoke a lot about Great Indian Bustard, but he also spoke about grasslands, which are doing very badly today. And we want to be visible, not just through our words, but through our work. Uh, these are a few images of, you know, trails that my colleagues have held across India in memory of Salim Ali. The first is the extremely polluted national capital. It's a walk in the river Yamuna uh, this week. Uh, the second is from Asola. The, the photograph below is from Bombay, uh, and the one on the right is from this morning at the CEC, the Conservation Education Center in Bombay. I also wanted to announce that uh, uh, there's a beautiful book coming out. It's called Words for Birds uh, by Tara Gandhi. She's here to speak with us today. And it's basically um, uh, the collected uh, video transcripts of uh, Dr. Ali between the 40s and the 80s. So she's edited this volume. It's a book that is going to be published by Permanent Black a little later. She can tell us a bit more about that when she's speaking. I also wanted to share with all of you these lovely images which have been made by Rohan Chakravarti, who's a very talented um, artist. This is his, um, you know, perception of Salim Ali's journey. Now we know that he started as a, as a hunter and he shot a bird which looked a little different from other birds. And that is the yellow-throated sparrow, also called the Salim Ali sparrow. And, uh, you know, once he had this bird in his hand, he was very curious. It looked different to him. So we imagine that his curiosity led him to the BNHS, led him to the archives, led him to read books and to see what he could find out. And uh, I also know that accountancy and law, and he studied zoology on the side, but clearly it was uh, an overriding passion for him, which he followed up throughout uh, his life and um, so many sanctuaries owe their existence to Salim Ali, but not just sanctuaries, but also environmental movements such as the Silent Valley Movement, uh, which led to the protection of a vast stretch in the Western Ghats, which again are in peril today. And I just wanted to end with the idea that, you know, he wrote um, this autobiography called The Fall of a Sparrow when he was actually quite old. And for many of us, me included as a little girl, uh, it seemed like birds were flying out of the page. And that is actually something that is there in Rohan's illustration as well. You know, when you open the book, a, a book like The Fall of the Sparrow, it really appears that the, the, the Salim Ali Sparrow or any other bird on nature just leaps out at you from the page. All the pictures have been taken from the BNHS archives. The illustrations belong to Rohan Chakravarti. And yes, we miss uh, Salim Ali's very clear conservation voice. Um, and we hope to do our best to um, make sure that his legacy lives on.
I invite Bittu Segal, the president of BNHS, to now take over and um, invite the speakers. Well, nobody can take over from, from the old man, from Dr. Salim Ali. He is uh, somebody whose presence is not just in Hornbill House, it's in our hearts, you know. And I look, look, I'm looking at so many people here right now and <clears throat> just wondering, one of the things that uh, Dilnawaz, I think Salim would have definitely said was, will you stop talking and get on with it? You know, <laughs> he was very impatient, you know. So let's just put it like this. The idea of meeting tonight was not so much to tell, you know, the whole world that this is what Dr. Salim Ali was. I think the idea tonight is a very informal getting together of those people who actually loved this man learned from him, were inspired by him. And in some form or the other, if we ever wanted to give back to Dr. Salim Ali something of what he gave us, just give it to the BNHS. Very often I've been sitting with him and he's saying, all your praise is all very well. How about a nice big fat for the check for the BNHS, you know? So it's not just the check, it's our, it's our energy. It's everything else. I don't need to go on much more. I think that... Uh, Right now, I don't know if Dr. Dr. Ranjit Singh is on. Is he on with us, Neha? Has he joined us? Has he been able to link in? I don't think so. I think we can uh, start with the second speaker. Well, whenever. Then, Belinda, the job is yours. All of us are going to speak for a very little while, but we want to give the flavor of what we felt when we met this man and how he changed things. So, Belinda, we're all yours. Belinda, you're on mute. You'll have to unmute yourself. So what I thought would be would be fun to do would be to to read out a diary entry written the same day of a field trip between uh, Dr. Salim Ali and Dr. Dylan Ripley. But they they were they were very good at sort of bantering with each other and 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 of course loved being in the field. Um, but I'll have to read it out. Sorry about that. <laughs> so, um, and just by way of introduction, you know, we all know um, Dr. Salimali had a very short fuse um, for people that, that who did not meet his expectations. And I used to watch with absolute fascination at the sort of fear he used to instill in many of his field staff and, and colleagues. Um, however, if you pass his high standards, and there are many people sitting here who did pass those high standards and who he adored. Um, he was the most charming, loyal, and devoted friend you could ever have. So I have absolutely no idea why he was so fond of me and, and my former husband, Stanley Breeden, but he became one of the most important people in our lives. And our happiest times were all in the field, just watching birds and talking or taking part in, in one of the BNHS uh, sort of netting surveys. And what we especially loved about him was his joy and endless curiosity, um, even you know really late in his life about anything feathered. And he had this deep appreciation and emotional connect um, with nature. I don't need to have this on, on, on the screen because I'm reading it. Yeah, you can take that off. Yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm adding it to, to it as I go along. And interesting, he was an avid eight millimeter filmmaker. And in 1981, he asked Stan and I to, to help him sort out and categorize his vast collection of film footage on his research and, and, and travels. And it was such a privilege. You know, day after day, we sat there. Um, the three of us at his sister and brother-in-law's house in Pali Hill. And we sort of traveled back through time and listening to his stories and reliving nearly 55 years um, of his life through his roles of film. And, you know, it's amazing. We're talking about adventures in Burma, unbelievable adventures in this funny, um, well, there were two vehicles that uh, Lo Guan to gave him, which were little, little sort of... Um, what do you call it with uh, wood wooden backs? Uh, I don't know what they're called, but anyway, they were like Morris Miners extended. Um, 
busy listing these films that I was never able to to write down. Uh, I've I've lost you all. Are you still there? Is it okay? Yeah. Okay. And uh, his close friend and supporter, uh, Lo Kwan To, joined him on many of his ventures and featured hugely in these uh, Salim Ali's footage. And it, it was he who really encouraged him to continue filming and so on. And uh, Dylan Ripley was his other sort of very close collaborator and friend for decades. So this diary entry um, is, is uh, dated 25th of February, 1979. Okay. And it was written by Stan, and I asked him to um, photocopy or, or photograph these two pages so that I could read them out to you all. At 7 a.m. on a very cool morning, the party arrived at our doorstep in a huge car, so big that it couldn't get around the driveway in one go. Inside, with windows misted over, were Tom and Beryl D. Rabalovich. Many of you might remember them. He was the science attaché at the American Embassy. Dylan and Mary Ripley, Salim Ali, and Nalini and Amina Jail. What good company. It remained cool and windy for most of the day, nice and bracing. Sultan Poor spread its magic spell over everyone. Birds, as always, were close at hand, numerous, exotic, and colorful. It was good amongst people who knew birds and for whom there would be few surprises in which species turned up. Dylan was enthralled by the black-tailed godwits and what he thought was a female scorp. He was mentally still in the US, um, but Salim said it was definitely a female tufted duck. Salim Ali and others loved the fully adult plumage yellow-headed wagtail. And Salim and Stan were pleasantly surprised to see the large black-headed gull immaculate with bright yellow beak and feet. And I particularly love the avocets foraging in a geel near the railway line. But as was to be expected, it was the pelicans who stole the show. They enthralled everyone, and we were still talking about them long after a filling lunch. The big birds made their appearance early. At our first stop, while we were watching Godwits, ducks, and flamingos, Flight after flight came over, very low, and disappeared in the direction of the marshes beyond the village. Eventually, we got there too, and found 300 to 400 pelicans jammed together in the small swamp beside the railway track. They were surrounded by camp followers feeding on stray fish. About 20 white neck stalks, scores of spoonbills, gray herons, white egrets, and terns overhead. Just before the train came puffing towards us, a man appeared and for some unfathomable reason chased the pelicans away. It would have been a remarkable sight to see them take off, but by then they were hidden by the train. The pelicans didn't go far. As we were driving back, we saw them land in what looked like a very small spot between sand dunes. From where we were, there was no sign of water, but we found them in a tiny corner of the marsh, brimming with fish. There were even more camp followers here, Swarms of terns and gulls of four species, white ibis and painted storks, as well as the usual. We stood on a slight rise overlooking this corner of the marsh, and eventually the pelicans took off. We were just too close, a hundred feet or so. Cameras clicked furiously. We had time to note the deeper colors, the pink on the body and the yellow on the beaks. Dylan was, uh, Dylan Ripley, of course, was moved to remark remarked that he had never seen so many rosy pelicans together, not so near. That's a better concentration of pelicans than you see in the Danube. There you see only twos and threes and everyone gets excited. <laughs> so then um, Salim Ali said to Dylan, I've not seen it written everywhere, have you? But young spot-billed pelicans are pure white, while those of the rosy are almost black probably because one nests in trees and the other on the ground. And a little while later, Dylan said to Salim, do you remember the earlier times we came here? I think it was about 15 years ago when we could hear the booming of guns all around. It, I took the opportunity, this is Stan talking, to get some identification checked. Ringal, tawny eagle, large spotted eagle, and what could perhaps be a juvenile golden eagle. 
The waders remained a mystery. Both Salim and Dylan said they were out of practice and could not identify many with certainty. The same with the less well-plumaged wagtails. I don't feel so bad now about not being able to name every species. I asked Salim Ali about the lark I had seen earlier, the one with the band around the chest, and he said it was most likely the Calandra lark. He even went to the trouble of looking it up in the ten-volume handbook, which was in the forest bungalow at Sultanpur, where we had breakfast. He gave the reference, volumes 5 and 16. Inevitably, the hunter Suba Singh turned up with more tales of blackbuck hunting. He got one blackbuck and three hares while taking around the general secretary of the army from the French embassy. Nalini quizzed him. Didn't he know it was illegal against the government laws? Suba Singh got suspicious and shut up. Breakfast was laid out on the rest house overlooking the lawn and the lake. The sun came out. We were warm at last. Salim and Dylan discussed grebes and moorhens, which were out in the lake, and also the finer points between the various species of harrier. They looked marvellous together, standing at the edge of the lake, pointing and talking. One small, almost minute, impish, with cap and heavy gloves. The other tall, large, urbane. Dylan called Salim his governess when in India. Mary, <laughs> <laughs> and Mary chided Salim for his predilection for American chocolate and ice cream. Salim Ali had no good word to say about parakeets. He thinks they are frightful, good for nothings. These are quotes, you know, and very destructive and noisy. He said they should be harvested and canned for they are good eating. And after all, they live on the fat of the land. Um, Blue took pictures of Salim Ali beside a tree he planted at the rest house, a chakrasa tabularis from the east. The plaque identified him as Dr. Salim Ali Birdwatcher, which amused him no end. Lunch was at our home, very relaxing and much fun. It was a memorable day. And then one tiny bit, which was... Some it was a year late. Well, November nineteen eighty. There's an interesting thing I found because I had forgotten it. An interesting historical thing to do with Bharatpur. Um, despite his very tight schedule, this was so. We're, we're talking about the tenth of November nineteen eighty. Salim Ali kindly fitted in a day for us, and we drove down to Bharatpur with David and Hussein to film him and the Maharaja chatting together. Everything went beautifully, and it was wonderful weather. Dr. Salam Ali made it quite clear that we should not give the impression that the Maharaja was in any way instrumental in having Bharatpur made a sanctuary. He said it had to be forcibly extracted from him and could only be done by allowing him to retain shooting rights. These rights were revoked in 1972. We drove back to Delhi on the 11th to put Salim Ali and Hussein on a plane to Bombay. It was the day before his 85th birthday. Then we drove back to Bharatpur. That night we did a goom and saw a great horned owl and a python in a tree at Python Point. Lou saw a very small python on the road. It was like a jewel, she said, shimmering and brightly colored. At Keola Day, five, five owls sat on a row in a big tree over the lake and a family of jackals howled at the half moon. So. Thank you. Thank you, Blue. So these two, uh, the start of this was just to give you a flavor of what he looked like, what he did, yeah. and what he did. Thank you, Blue, for the rest of us are going to be speaking, um, you know, in, in snippets and snappets, but just essentially to give a flavor of who he was and what your relationship with him was. Um, Robert, uh, Shaila, are you there? Just a couple of minutes. Please share with us. Robert has been somebody who has been part of the BNHS since, since forever. 1964. <coughs> 1964. I joined the Bombay Natural History Society. And that before that, I was in a college in Nagarpur, South India. And I used to question the our zoology professor asking to identify very many bird species. And he could not identify. Then finally, he would tell me. You go to Bombay Natural History Society by Dr. Salim Ali's, there they will do everything. Then I decided to come to Bombay. I was interviewed and selected by Mr. J.C. Daniel. And uh, I thought I arrived in Mecca. 
was very happy to be there for the next 28 years, 28 years and more, and had a personal relationship with relationship with Dr. Salimali all the time. He was very dis very good in discipline, punctuality, and all that. So he didn't want to be a taskmaster for people. At particular time, you had to have breakfast. The particular time, lunch, and then work until what a certain time. Then go to sleep early. He always went to sleep before nine o'clock. Even when he had a banquet in Maharaja Maharaja of Bharatpur, pilot, who just walk away at that time. Then driving used to be very good. And another thing is that perfection. He always wanted everything to be perfect. The data should be gathered properly. Identification should be accurate. Inter intellectual honesty or something that was remarkable about him. I had to learn a lot of him. <coughs> and another thing, as Neha had said earlier, that the first love that he had, the curiosity towards things, they lasted. I saw him sometime looking at a crow and then look, saying how beautiful it is. Huh. So that's how it was. The first love continued to be with him. He used to be very happy seeing a bulbul one day and not seeing anything else. He was still happy. And lastly, one day we were going by motor, uh, auto rickshaw in Bharatpur Bird Sanctuary. That time he was asking me, Robert, so no, that was in 1969 or something. Do you know, Robert, that I have been living so long? That time it was not that long. He lived another several years. He said, I am living that long. Well, most of my friends are dead and gone. I said, tell me, sir, what it is. So they all got retired in life, but I never got retired in life. I completely <laughs> So that reminds us. And finally, eight days before, eight hours before he died, I went to his house at Bandras, his uh, sister's house, cousin's house, and then met him there. He showed me his muscles like a thin reed. Anyway, you saw in his deathbed, actually, eight hours left. So I told him, sir, sir, you have done a great thing in ornithology. You taught us many things. We'll come and let you know what we did when you come and meet you in heaven. With that, we closed. And then after that, the loss met him. And then within a few hours, he was gone. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Robert. Uh, really, all of us over here have stories to tell. Firoza. Uh, you you have known him as well, I think, uh, for a very long time. Share a couple of minutes with us. Yes, for about 40 years, and it will be a couple of minutes. <laughs> Mrs. Feroza Godrich, yeah. I speak for many members of our family, starting with Sorabji. Uh, they were really quite inseparable. And uh, the first time I met him was at uh, Godrich Bhavan on the terrace. I think Dil Nawaz had brought him along. And then subsequently, when he was staying at Walkeshwa with her, he would drop in early mornings to meet SPG. And I think that tradition continued. And uh, whether it was Manohar Awati going off to Ladakh for the Black Neck train, or as recently as uh, th four years ago, Rishad going out into the forests all over the place looking for his beloved raptors. And when you say copious notes, I think this is what Salim Ali taught anyone who went with him anywhere, was to take meticulous notes. You may not be an ornithologist or have special training in the field, but if you had a passion, it could overcome everything. And uh, The Raptor Bird on Southeast Asia is really quite a phenomenal book from somebody who didn't have a formal education in the subject. Yes, he helped save Bharatpur. He helped save. Silent Valley was a huge struggle. I am very well aware of that. That was the time, I think, when I really came on the scene with him. But, you know, his book, The Fall of a Sparrow, when he passed away, one could just not help but think of this wonderful publication, which is now, I, I don't know how many editions it's gone into, is, is an absolute Bible for any bird watcher in, in, in the country. It's a great introduction. Yes, he moved with the great and the mighty and the Smithsonian and Dylan Ripley and the eight, 10 volumes that, some, that someone Neha mentioned earlier. Yes, of course, he was a taskmaster 
and I was really enjoyed seeing the archival pictures and footage from the BNHS uh, archives. It brought back a lot of memories. I'm not going to say too much more, but uh, I know that wherever he is celebrating his 124th, he is looking down on BNHS. I'd like to leave on a positive note, and please indulge me. BNHS is a venerable organization. It has seen its ups and downs. All institutions see that. But I would urge all members here and all the other 5,000 odd members of the BNHS, don't forsake your values for anything. Sometimes we are tempted, we have a temptation to do projects which we know are not doable in the time frame that is given to us. So let us be uh, let us be rigorous in our choice. Let us have healthy debates. Uh, my term was very, very close to BNHS with the late Mr. B.G. Deshmukh. As a matter of fact, he sent me off to Bala to Point Kalama. And the only reason I went there, because of the donor. The donor was very, very important. What he, was he doing the right things? Or was BNHS being used? I'm sorry to say it, but since you've given me an opportunity, don't use us as a whitewash, you know, be honest to your integrity and follow those values. BNHS has seen lots of highs, lots of lows, many staff members come and go, many scientists come and go. But this is our core value. And I think it should be written into the DNA of every BNHS member. And I think that is the best tribute we can pay to the memory of Dr. Salim Ali this evening and for the future. Thank you very, very much. I speak oh. on behalf of the entire Godrej Paribar. We have some archival pictures too. One day, maybe we'll do another event with Salim Ali. Thank you. And uh, you. Thank, you. thank you so much, Firoza. From the heart, as always, the other person who has known him, loved him, been with him, shared exactly the values that you spoke of is Dilnamaz. If Dilnamaz, a few minutes, Please, there are so many of us. Each one of us has stories to tell. Dilemmas, we're yours. Okay, is it unmuted? Uh, your one minute, Dilemmas. You've got you've got your speaker on. You'll have to put your speaker off because it's reverberating. So, is that all right? Can you speak? And you now you're on mute, Dilemmas. It's your loud, it, it's the, you've actually got two devices on Dilemmas. One of them needs to be, no, we can't hear you. You're on mute, Dilemmas. You're on mute. Well, all of us who were born around. Okay, <laughs> okay there you go. Wonderful. Perfect. We can hear you. Uh, but other, you've, got a, you've got a second device which yes, is reverberating. Can you, can you close the second device? Can somebody mute the other one? Can you mute the other device? I tell you what, Dildamas, should yes. we just come back and uh, while they're trying to do that, uh, yes. can we come back to you? And uh, we have the most wonderful Tara Gandhi here. Tara, would you, would you please hold the fort? And, and if you could switch off your... Uh, and if you could switch off your... Dildamas, just switch off one device, yeah. Okay, Tara, we're yours. Yes, thank you so much. I don't deserve that. Um, uh, but I knew Dr. Salim Ali as a teacher, and he was my mentor, of course. Like he has been for so many uh, of us who have been associated with him. And I had the very special privilege of being his last student. So he was in 90 when uh, he was my teacher. And of course, age had had taken away a lot of his energy and had uh, made him frail. Like you can see in this uh, picture behind, which is my, which is a very precious uh, memory your, for me. Uh, yeah. But your, yes. Your video is off, off, I think. Yeah. Is, okay. is it off? Can you see yeah, me Yeah, the now? video is off, but we can hear you clear. So please go on. Okay. Can you see me now? No. All right. Doesn't matter. Yeah. So, but, um, uh, yeah, so this is what he expected, such high standards. I'm going to repeat the same words that everybody else has said so far and probably going to say again. Um, he was a perfectionist. He expected very, very high standards. 
uh, he expected um, us to be, you know, as good as he would have liked us to be. And at least as for me, it was an extremely tough uh, challenge because even though he was frail, his um, his enthusiasm and his um, meticulousness didn't fade away at all right till the end. And this is what he expected of me, which I must say I slipped up ever so often. I um, and uh, I could not uh, deliver the goods ever so often during the course of my studies. And during those times, he would not mince his words. He would uh, express his displeasure. He would express his uh, disapproval in no uncertain terms. So much so that sometimes it's so harsh and sometimes it was um, intimidating for me, as it must have been for many of his other students as well. <laughs> but at the same time, and this is the most uh, exceptional thing about his personality, that when the going was good, when I actually managed to, when I, I did uh, reach some level of his uh, expectation, he would be equally generous. He'd be so generous with his uh, approval in, and warm and affectionate, which is something that a student really longs for. And I got it. I got the warmth and the affection along with the with the, you know with the correction which I needed very much of course. And Ali Mali was that of course he was the greatest ornithologist in India. He was the greatest conservationist in India. At the same time he was a great communicator. And it's been my wonderful, wonderful experience and pleasure to have collected uh, much of his writings and put them into books. And now the next one that is coming up on uh, uh, his radio talks, which is which was so good of you to uh, announce that, uh, Neha, thank you, um, is it that that in that he has, uh, it's a collection of his radio talks over 40 years. And he has spoken to students, he has spoken to people of all levels. Of uh, society, as you saw in the photographs, he went excellent communication with the higher ups, with Indira Gandhi, with the chief minister, with the prime minister, with the, the rulers of the country, of the states, and so, and these communications come through in his in his uh, writings and in his uh, in his speeches and in his radio talks. And I'd like to just read out a small paragraph. <clears throat> So, which he has to quote Dr. Salim Ali. So he says here, all animals fulfill some special purpose in nature. Nature keeps her balance and never permits one animal to increase disproportionately at the cost of another. If meddlesome man interferes with this balance of nature as it is called, he always does so at the risk of serious consequences to himself. So now, when you hear these kind of words, you realize that what he said, I, mean, I don't know when he said that, maybe 50 years ago, 60 years ago, 40 years ago, they are contemporary right now. They apply to our today. And it is so important now, as has been said before, that we continue this legacy, that we keep his memory alive and keep his words and his wisdom alive. So thank you. Thank you very much. It's been a great honor and a pleasure to be here today and to celebrate his 124th birthday anniversary. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, she's ready now. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Dilemas, we're yours now. Right. Um, I'm not going to repeat what uh, others have said. I do from 1973 when I was chief executive of WWF India. And what was very touching was the way in which all the stalwarts at that time, Salim Ali, Daniel, Hawkins, uh, Pandya, used to involve me in the office bearers meetings of the BNHS. We, I was the youngest, 50 years younger than Salim Ali, and uh, uh, age made no difference. I mean, we were on first name basis from the beginning. Uh, and, and he, uh, unlike Tara, since I was not a student of his, not once in the 12 years that we worked together, we ever uh, used a harsh word uh, uh, with me. In fact, uh, my best memories are of his sense of humor. 
because uh, uh, after I I had no time when I was actually administrator of the WWF, but I resigned in '76 and then uh, joined the BNHS executive committee. But more than that. I had time to go on trips with him. So we went to Arunachal uh, Pradesh with Dr. Dilim Ripley. And after that, Namdafa was declared to go that. We went to Navigaon, Agzira, Taroba, the run of Kutch, uh, uh, Sinipal, where he wanted to learn from the director of the Tigerism at the right age of 85, to my astonishment. Um, so uh, when I think back, it's really little snippets, like when he was in the uh, jeep. Chief Council uh, Chaudhary had taken the good jeep for himself and put Salim Ali in the uh, rattle trap jeep. Which, uh, and he said, this sounds like a wailing widow. <laughs> then uh, when we were in the run of touch, the camel of Rashid, the chief wildlife warden, uh, slipped and deposited poor Rashid into the icy cold water. And we thought maybe the camel had fallen on him. But Rashid emerged back up with his hat on his head, his binoculars around his neck. And Salim Ali, we were all saying, oh dear, are you OK? Salim Ali said, this is the first time I've seen a camel put a chief wildlife warden in his place. So, so we, and he was busy filming this. Um, and the, so many of these kind of uh, anecdotes. Uh, so more than this, many of the trips we made did result in either subsequently the stopping of a dam or uh, this, uh, the creation of a wildlife sanctuary, etc. But uh, it was really the human being within the conservationist and the naturalist uh, whom I enjoyed very much. and. Uh, the uh, kind of letters also that is written, I must give them at some point to the BNHS uh, archives. Uh, including, for instance, when he gave my son his uh, his uh, gun, his, uh, what is it called? His air gun. Yeah. He gave all the instructions. When he gave him a small present, he said, buy yourself a Rolls Royce Silver Phantom from this. I think it must have been 101 rupees. I don't think about it. And put the balance in your bank account for for the future. You know, it, it was this kind of thing. He loved poetry. I have his entire poetry collection of a book. And uh, uh, the regard that Indira Gandhi had for him was enormous. Uh, when, uh, when I got... Romulus's uh, uh, write up on Silicon Valley. It was Dr. Salim who asked. I said, It's uh, really important. So many things coming to my table. He said, It's very important. And that's how uh, I started the same Silent Valley uh, cup of tea with Mr. Gordon Soli also there. In fact, I must tell you that R.K. Dhawan said that only Salim Ali's letters and Soli Godrej's letters, this is Indira Gandhi's will not be intercepted at any level. They must go to her and be read uh, by her. And uh, on the several visits, uh, she kept loads of uh, vote seekers, of uh, ticket seekers waiting while she chatted at her silent place. Uh, though he thought it was a lost cause, he would always sign a letter about it. And I think uh, uh, the kind of rigor that he had was such that one had to imbibe it, as Sarah said, or there would be trouble. In fact, in an entire article I wrote supposedly from him, he added only then, maybe. Because though he had high levels of commitment to, uh, to conservation, he was extremely rigorous and scientific. He did not like the overuse of words, did not like the overuse he said one should be like a knife that gets burnt by constant use and uh, was selected in some ways. And uh, the best part was that although he and Hukai Abdullah had serious differences, both of them uh, were upfront. There was nothing 
surreptitious, no politicking, no manipulating. Uh, they went over and talked to each other. They had uh, differences. And I have seen this has been lost in the game. I'm sorry to say it, but in the last 10, 15 years, I, mean, I left the BNHS. Uh, I was holding on trying to bridge gaps. But this kind of manipulative thing was there was not a manipulative bone in Salim. He was upfront with whatever he wanted to do or to say. And I think this integrity, both in science and at a personal level, is what I respect and I hope to heavens the BNHS will bring this kind of value system back, whereby uh, it will remain as an organization of respected individuals, which she was. Thank you. Thank you, Dilnavaz. Wise words from somebody who loved him, and I think he loved you just as much. I've seen your interactions with a wicked man in many ways, you know. Uh, I, I'll just interject one small little something, you know. The first time I ever met Dr. Salim Ali was in his Pali house, still on his, on, his, on his desk were books piled up like skyscrapers. And I kept on trying to move like this between the books to read and he would keep moving the other way. So I was doing an interview for the uh, Indian Express for Dr. Salim Ali and I was quaking in my pants at the age of 23 or 24 or something. And I asked, her, I said, a most unique question I asked him. I said, sir, when did you first get interested in birds? So he looked on the other side and he said, I think it must have been at the age of puberty. You know, so, so, so there we are. There we are. That was Dr. Salim Ali. There, there's no order in what we are going to do. We have a very young, most wonderful Usha who's here. Usha, please, we're yours. From Sikkim, from Father. You're so welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I mean, my uh, my first introduction to BNHS actually first was uh, you know after in class 12, so it was Dr. Robert Grubb actually who was the first person I met, and I as a student member went to Borivali National Park, you know, and that's when I saw how Dr. Salim Ali, you know, he wouldn't want anybody's help if he had to go down the slope, you know, he would refuse help, he would want to go on his own, and I was very impressed. I'd never been to field ever, you know, I had a very sheltered childhood. So this was my first kind of uh, look at what freedom really was, you know, the, the forest, the water, the streams, the rocks, the, the people, the BNS members, you know. I mean, it was it was an amazing part of my life that started. And then in the bird room, what amazed me was his immaculate handwriting, you know. It's unbelievable. I mean, I don't think he ever wrote shabbily, even when he wasn't in the mood. So in the bird room, I saw his handwriting and I tried to copy actually, you know, and some of the labels that we needed to replace I was trying to copy Dr. Salim Ali's handwriting, you know. And it was really, really a wonderful thing to see. Oh, wow, you know, he's such a great scientist. And he has never written something, you know, in a bad handwriting. That impressed me a lot. And I tried to copy it in, uh, for a long time, actually. And even when we interacted with him uh, in the field, and once, even when the movie Gandhi was on, you know, he asked me and his assistant to take him for the movie. And he asked specifically, he said, please get me some dark chocolate. So, you know, Selena was saying, was very fond of chocolate. So I also got to experience that part of him. And then when I joined BNHS actually as a junior field biologist. After spending some time in uh, Kevla Devagana, uh, I joined Dr. Remani's Endangered Species Project. And that was, you know, when uh, the Lithoplorican we were studying in Sailana in Madhya Pradesh. And uh, yeah, of course, we had Ali Hussein with us. Ali Hussein, his, his, the entire, you know, the bird trappers. I would today like to acknowledge, you know, that what, what Dr. Salim Ali has done for the bird trapping uh, community. That's also something I think is possible and there's no, no comparison with anyone else. So, uh, and he ring the uh, when he needed to ring the florican section, he came all the way. He was so old. He came all the way, you know, to ring the uh, first florican. And uh, Mr. Lord was also there. So it was it was a very very. I was I was awestruck and I was really. You, know, you can see from one of the photographs I've been sharing. You know, imagine meeting him like this so close and in person, and in the field. That was one another good experience of mine. 
and uh, after shortly after actually since i got married to uh, gandan who is a sikhi and we put to sikkim and i found that he has done the book boys of sikkim and i'm seeing your new podcast of somebody from malaysia and uh, dr salimuli has written how local and so you know, supported him in the field in the sikkim ornithological survey which was actually commissioned by the maharaj kumar it's called the chogyal of sikkim uh, pt namgyal palden tenduk namgyal who was can you hear me Ah, yes, we yeah. can. Yeah. Okay. So uh, the Chogel actually commissioned him to do a, a survey and to publish this book, and the forest department published this book. And when I went to Sikkim, uh, you know, when we used to say, "Oh, uh, whenever we went to field, we say, you know, which books we carried." So we would normally say, "Like, did you carry Salim Ali?" You know. So <laughs> <laughs> that was one of the things. You know, so I said there was no Salim Ali in Sikkim. I couldn't find it. This, there was a Scottish principal of the girls' school. She had a bird uh, in her uh, uh, school campus, and it was it was. Uh, I mean, she didn't know what it was, so she called me. I had just joined the forest department, so I went there, and she had the book, you know. So in from that, we identified it as a red wing crested cuckoo, and then I had this thing that there is no salimali in Sikkim. The books were out of print, so one of our uh, very senior uh, officials in the government. he had this thing called uh, ngo called the sikkim nature conservation foundation and through that actually he had the birds of sikkim reprinted so in that sense dr salim ali accompanied me through my journeys in sikkim wow. through the remotest and most difficult areas it was dr salim ali's book that i uh, gleaned through you know when i had to look for names for my baby so both our children our daughters are named minla and yuhina which i got from dr salim ali's books And I mean, I mean, they are the most beautiful names, I think. Yeah. So I really thank Dr. Salim Ali for that, you know. And uh, for all like Wonderful. Subu has been doing the retracing Dr. Salim Ali's roots in the south. I would have loved to do the same thing for Sikkim, but I need to see his diaries, and I don't know who has his diaries, so that I could retrace his steps in Sikkim and redo his survey at this point of time. Thanks, thanks a lot. Yeah. No, no, that's 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 a task unto itself, and I think we should uh, double down and try and see where we can get all the stuff. In fact, all the material that is lying with all these wonderful people here. If you could share that, the Bombay Natural History Society, I promise you, over the next year or so, we'll try to meticulously keep these things, record these things, and and make sure the man is remembered, not just by us but by everybody else. We've got a lot of people here. We'll have to sort of quicken things up a bit. Uh, We've got Bill Harvey here. Bill, uh, a couple of minutes. I'm sorry. It's just the flavor of what you're doing. Each one of us has storms to speak about this wonderful man and his and your experiences. Bill, are you there? Can can you? Is, is your is your mic? I I don't see you on my screen. But is your is your are you on mute or something? I don't hear you, Bill. But I don't think that can you get Ranjit Singh back? I think okay, uh, we I, I, have Dr. Ranjit Singh. He's just joined yeah, us. Yeah, we. Yeah, wonderful. He's our first Ran speaker. Wonderful. R Ranjit, we're all yours. I, I do want to. And the Ranjit is still on mute. All the rest of us can put our our speakers on mute. No, you're still on mute, Ranjit. Ran Ranjit, you're still on mute. Nope, nope. There's a there's there should be a a speaker symbol at the bottom of your screen if you're. Ah, there we are. We can hear somebody now. No, is that you, Ranjit? No. Look, we'll have to come back, uh, Ranjit. We'll have to come back to you when you. No, no. Okay, there you are. Wonderful. Yes, very very clear. Go ahead. Okay, uh, my deepest apologies. I it just shows how how clueless I am. No, I just wanted to say this. Um, two, three things. One is, uh, uh, um, Dr. Salim Ali as a pioneer, Dr. Salim Ali as a role model, and his relevance in today's world. And if I, I'll try to. How much time? Five minutes less. R Ranjit, under five minutes because we've got a lot of people. But oh, we... I see. You know, so all right. So let me hurry through. 
We're we iron, are... iron filings to the magnet that is Dr. Salim Ali. Please carry on. Okay. In in uh, we all know that he uh, he was a pioneer in the sense that <clears throat> at a time when hunting was uh, a thing of the uh, tradition, he branched off. There are one thing uh, you see as a role model. As a role model, we, all of us, conservationists, we are so territorial. We, we like to project ourselves and what we have done that had it not been for me, the Bara Singha would have got extinct. Had it not been for me, the tiger would have died. Here was a man who did not talk about himself. He didn't write an autobiography or a, a thing. Tara is writing one. It was his work. He let his work speak. He was, he was a selfless person. He did not, he did not uh, anywhere. I could, I don't remember saying ki mene ye kiya. Uh, all through, and it was his work, ninety-five percent plus. But he let Dylan Ripley share it. He let others come in, and it was always, uh, always. Uh, uh, somebody else, you know, as, as if, as if his work was his priority, and it was. <clears throat> Coming to the aspect of, uh, uh, as, as somebody, um, for his relevance today, you know, one of the most important thing, or one of the most rarest commodity today, is leisure. People with leisure, people who have the option of sitting back and, 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 and drinking whiskey and doing nothing. Told everyone. Because you had the, you because had the, the sounds. Of, of yeah. you, Bill, you need to keep yourself on mute. Yeah. 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 Sorry, Ranjit. Yeah. No, no, no. Ranjit, I'm asking Bill, will somebody mute Bill's mic, please? Yeah. Please go on, Ranjit. You see, he was a contemporary of Ravindranath Tagore and of... Uh, of uh, Leo Tolstoy and all that, who had that leisure, who could sit back and do nothing, and 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 go through life, be a playboy, God knows what, but he sat back, and he he contributed. Uh, he contributed like like I mean, Ravindranath Tagore could have sat back. So many else people uh, from my generation who sat back and did nothing, enjoyed life. But he had to contribute. And therefore, and therefore that should be a role model. Today I can think of one or two people. Rishad Nauroji. He could have sat back, he was rich. But he contributed, he wrote a book, which is ever going to be a seminal work. He's not too well, Rishad, and I... I wish him very, very well. But you know, people have they have leisure, people have money. But people join the father's job, fine. But you can still contribute. You see, I, I equate. I equate conservation with a very important catchword today. Mm. Uh, patriotism, nationalism, patriotism. Conservationists are the greatest patriots of all. What is the definition of patriotism? Somebody who selflessly tries to help and save the country. Saving the country is not only from foreign aggression and jihad and aggr aggrandizement, also saving from local aggrandizement. And, and selflessly, without projecting of himself. So many of us join conservation because we are more from ourselves. We want to project ourselves. Here was a man who contributed. Conservation is of giving as much as, as patriotism is giving. And therefore, Salim was a patriot. He gave. He did not get anything and didn't expect anything in return. That is the message of the man. That Wonderful. is why he's a role model. And that is something we must learn. Not only we must put us, ourselves together instead of pulling in different directions, especially now, as you have always been saying, Bittu, 
but our cells act and go through the process of being selfless of trying to do what we believe in and and not just sit back and enjoy life of course enjoy life nobody life is there but then when you go why are we remembering today sali mali because he contributed because he himself gave to conservation without expecting anything in the in return and therefore and and, and where did we ever hear of of him talking even about the baya or beaver bird and all that it was all a question of passion and if you have passion and if you have commitment which comes from passion then you can contribute then you can make a mark in life and that was all salim ali was about i think i've gone on wrong enough <laughs> All right. Between you are on mute. Between you are on mute. Sorry, I I was on mute. I said all these vignettes that are being put together build this man, but there we are. We live in the in the memories of Bill Bill Harvey. You've known this man very well. Please, just a couple of minutes, but please, just these vignettes. You know, we'd love to hear this. And by the way, I understand we can take a little longer. Those of us who have the time can linger on. Uh, it was meant to be something that finishes at seven thirty or thereabouts, but we can carry on for at least till eight o'clock. So please, Bill, would you? And let's just keep keep the story going, rolling along. Bill, you're on mute, like I was just now. Uh, bill you're on mute bill if you can hear me otherwise bikram would you would you take over and then uh, after you we can have bill i see trevor there as well so uh, bikram can you hear me can you see me yes we can hear you and uh, i can't see you I, i well i'm somewhere in, 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 yeah 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 i see myself go on go on go on, go on. No, now i, I can see you know, what i want to say is that of all of you i know salim ali the least and i think everybody's done such a wonderful job talking about his the man i like to talk about the writer you know all of us remember with as the first book we got in college was salim ali's uh, book of birds i maybe got third or fourth edition by that time i have all 15 16 of them now but when you looked at it it was straight out of an english classroom perfect language what felicity what tongue i mean it was so beautifully described small sentences even now it can be a textbook on how to write english or how english should be spoken but after that you know we waited for several editions and then came hillbirds even better we were either used to you know salim ali's book or maybe whistler's books before that but what a fantastic job he did with hillbirds then came birds of the eastern himalayas which started life as birds of bhutan and then with the his permission it became a much larger book and the same thing continued but we never ever had a complete book on that could everybody else put your mics on mute please uh, there there are some some mics which are not on mute and we can hear you shiv kumar can you yeah okay please be quiet yeah and came the pictorial guide with terrible illustrations and small text but for the first time in our lives we had a book which took care of all the birds in it bated breath 10 volumes all our dreams were achieved is such a pity that you bnhs uh, couldn't keep up with the space ornithology was changing in india new names new nomenclature you know new taxonomy Uh, otherwise no work has ever been produced like this and is unlikely to be produced so there is absolutely 
uh, no doubt that he was the greatest and will still remain. Nobody in India will ever, ever have the kind of influence that he did. You have a long, long list of cast of people to talk, so I hand it over to you. Back to you, Victor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Vikram. I mean, these are the vignettes that actually go into making the history of the BNHS. Toby, uh, we hear Bill Harvey now. Bill, are you there? And can 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 you put your mic off mute? Otherwise, we'll have to move on. Um, Toby, will you hold the fort until uh, Bill is able to come back to us? Uh, you had a minute or so, something very interesting to talk to us. Are you there, Toby? Toby Sinclair, you've done a lot of the organizing behind the scenes for so many people, including the BBC, when they were filming uh, Dr. Salim Ali. Um, no? All right, we move on, Erich. It's your turn. Where are you, Erich? You're on mute right now. Could you switch on your uh, your your video as well? If this was done, he'd have done it in a jiffy. You know, I I have the same problem you do, Erich. Your your video is off, but if 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 you're if you just unmute yourself, we can hear you. No, you're still. On mute, we'll have to just keep coming back. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah, there yeah, you go. Okay, Arish, we're yours now. Do you see me also? I don't, but I let's don't. hear your voice. Let's hear your voice. Okay, it's great. It's, it's really great to be here. And uh, it's such a wonderful thought. And uh, uh, there must be very few people now who can say, I knew Salim Ali. 70 years ago. <laughs> uh, I think that's enough for introduction for me. But uh, uh, a very important thing was, how did this happen? I had a pair of bajigas at the age of six or seven, and, my, uh, and, and they wouldn't give uh, lay eggs. So my father told me, there's this um, uh, friend of mine who comes on motorcycles every Saturday. Go and ask him. Uh, whether they are a, a male and a female, a daddy and a mummy is what I was told. <laughs> so I went and asked the gentleman, I said, can you please, uncle, come and tell me whether my birds are a, are, are a daddy and a mummy? And he came and said, yes, you know, I think so. Because uh, then hey, time will tell, time will tell. At the end of this, I had 27 figures. So that was my first memory of Salim Ali, and there are several, several others from my very young childhood. But as I went to school, I started writing little letters to him. And instantly, within a week, those days, it was incredible, I would get a reply. They were, it, they were either typed or they were written on a postcard. Unfortunately, I kept them in my book of uh, Indian birds for many years. And uh, somebody borrow, borrowed it on a field trip, and, and the book never came back with all those letters. But uh, interestingly, recently I found the old letters, which seem very ridiculous today, uh, are still there in the, in the BNHS archives. So, and, and some of them are quite remarkable. I sent one of them to you, Bittu. Yes. Uh, so this was uh, what happened. And in college days, there were so many interactions with him because every time I went to Bombay, I had to go and see him either at Pali Hill or at the BNHS. So those were wonderful memories of mine because I learned all my conservation there and from the rest of the society as well, which makes me so, so close to the society. Well, uh, uh, just a couple of things. I, I once invited him to a bunch of... Uh, administrators to talk to at the administrative staff college at Bombay, where I used to go as a faculty as a, as a surgical teacher. So there were all these administrators sitting there. And uh, uh, Salim Bhai spoke for about five minutes. He was very reluctant to do this by that time. And uh, after having said that, well, Dr. Saab ne bola hai to jane padega. He came and he talked for about five or 10 minutes and then said, are there any questions? And someone from the audience asked, why do birds prefer to go and eat uh, uh, crops rather than go out into the into the grassland. And he said, uh, well, he, he couldn't hear too well, so he turned to me and he said, uh, Erich, is that what he is asking? What do I say? So I, I said, he's asking you. So he said, uh, well, gentlemen, 
uh, to answer that question, I'll have to go outside and ask the birds and walked out. <laughs> so this is how we would make a quick about just about anything. Uh, Bittu asked me uh, a few days ago whether I would write 800 words on these kind of little memories. In the same morning, I wrote 8,000 words. And, and that is the depth of how I knew him. So many little things which uh, made him so close to me for so many, many years. He was my mentor. He was my guide. He was a philosopher. But very importantly, he was my very, very great uh, which he refers to me as a schoolboy, as his friend, which is so remarkable. So I think what I learned from those very early motorcycle rides with him is what made me what I am. It gave me two lives, one as a surgeon and the other as an amateur ornithologist. But he never treated me like that. He always treated me like one of his own professional scientists, which is so very remarkable and for which it was... It was so much fun that to just be with him. It was so much fun. Right, and right. That is what made uh, me for Salim Ali. Uh, Salim Ali was for me a sort of a, he was a metamorphosis butterfly, you know. He's, I started <laughs> with him, Salim, Salim uncle, and then because all my family called him Salim Bhai, and then it became Sir. And when it, I think it was a reaction to my Sir to him, that he started calling me Dr. Saab for the rest of my life. Thank you very much. <laughs> oh, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. You know, Eric, you share something with him. There's a certain youthfulness about you, irrespective of all gray hair. And I think that's one of the gifts that Salim Saab gave up to all of us. Bill, I keep seeing you coming back. Please put your phone. Please put your mic on. You're on mute right thank now. You. Speak to us. So much to say. No, Bill. No, I can't hear you, Bill. You have to put yourself on. You take the mute off, Bill. Look, given as how all of us knew Dr. Salim Ali, forgive us for the fact that we're sort of fiddling around. That's what I have to do until my grandson comes along. Um, Bill, if you're... No? Okay, Bill give you another shot a little bit later let's we we have so many beautiful human beings who have done so much we have Bibhu prakash right now who has been working on vultures and we have chris bowden from the royal society of the protection of birds here between the two of them the partnership between the rspb and the bnhs has been so complete Bibhu, you could write a book again but give us a couple of minutes and between you and and um you know just 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 talk to us. Just talk to us, Chris. Both both of you put your phones off mute. Yeah. You. I think I will first talk a bit about Salim Ali, and I was very lucky that he was the one who interviewed me for the my first job in BNHS. And you know, I used to correspond with. Once he called me. He, for an interview to Bombay. And when I came to know that he is in the interview panel, I was quite, I was very nervous. And when I entered inside, and then uh, uh, Dr. Salih Amali saw me, and then he started talking about Meerut, where I came from. And he started talking about the big flows through the city and where he had done birding. And he was talking, he told me how many stars. And then, you know, we were discussing as if I was a, I was also an ornithologist and talking to such a, that, uh, uh, such a, uh, the, uh, I mean, the greatest ornithologist in the world. And, and we were conversing and I forgot that I was in a, I was being interviewed. And then after that, of course, I, I was grilled by another BNSS scientist, but then Salih Ali made me very comfortable in the interview. And then I got into a BNHS. And then, you know, when I started working and we were at, uh, I was at uh, Bharatpur, I was working with Dr. Vijayan. And when Dr. Salim Ali came there, and I was, in fact, working on heronries those days. And Dr. Salim Ali came with me in the boat to see the uh, heronry. And he told, gave me various ideas how to record number of birds. And he wondered how, why so many birds, species of birds nest together. There, when we saw 
uh, spotted eagles predating on sp uh, painted stocks nestlings and that's how he told uh, that's when i also got interested in raptors and he gave me nuances of how to study raptors and he he did ask me how do you differentiate between a spotted eagle and a tawny eagle i gave him various clues but then he told me, you should be very good you should concentrate also on the bare parts and then he said that how a spotted eagle will have a round nostril and stony eagle with that a slitted nostril and you can see it from the distance and which which i did and I, i from then onwards i got hooked on to studying raptors and i did raptors a lot and then i also came to know what a task master he was looking uh, uh, for av for our project and we do a lot of ringing so one morning he came up a vision when we were doing ringing and i was quite confident i i could i do ringing very well and i know how to take measurements and all that and uh, those days uh, that day we had whisker turn and black belly turn and you know uh, river turn and black belly turn they sometimes is difficult to tell apart during in winter plumage and so salya uh, said you take the measurements and then show me whether it's a black belly turn or a river turn took measurements and he was not happy at all because the wing length was too long and he he gave me a very dirty look i was really scared but fortunately dr vision was there and he took the measurements and then he was happy and he said it and then he told me that you've now take out all the measure uh, turns measurements from your records and show me tomorrow and then that any have we lost you uh bebu have we lost you i think we you can't can't hear you chris would you take okay, over well yeah. let, let me just um take over a little so, thanks so much for inviting me and lovely to hear bebu's reflections there i hadn't heard all of that before uh my my own contact with salim ali i'm afraid was only indirect in 1982 when as a fresh student uh, coming out of college we had some fanciful plans with Mike Rands and Paul Newton to go to the Andamans and uh, Mike came and met Salim Ali and he was extremely helpful for these young british guys to to try and ha- get that happening but unfortunately it never did happen so i never got to meet him in person but but i the, the thing i wanted to just say though was BNHS and Salim Ali's um faith in science and good measurements and and really basing what BNHS does on science is something that RSPB is very much in parallel on and of course through the vulture program and the save program we we really value that above everything to to make sure that we are taking decisions on on scientific basis and i i everything i know about uh, salim ali i in fact i i was just imagining if he was going to be on our in our one of our save meetings and the presence and great um uh vigor that he would bring to that it would have been wonderful but uh that legacy is there and um i know you've got lots of people but thanks thanks again for giving me this chance and um i'm looking forward to taking it forward thank you thank you so much chris the the rsp and the bnhs have a, a common destiny to fulfill and uh, vibhu you went off for a bit just to sentence or so i think we've got bill back we don't want to lose him <laughs> just give us a sentence or two and then we'll move to bill Bebu Oh no don't tell me we've lost you Bebu come on Bebu has been yeah. he's been nursing vultures for so long and he brought them back from the brink and quite honestly saving of the vultures is probably a more dramatic conservation saga than was saving of the tiger because we had lost the vultures Bebu give us a sentence or two and then we'll move to Bill Oh Bebu Okay go as you said that now we are doing vultures and Vibhu you are on mute again my friend you put yourself oh, on I... mute my friend now go... yeah yeah 
Um, yes, we have. Uh, we are trying to save vultures now. We, uh, we uh, and it's all. Uh, you know, uh, uh, interest in vultures also. I got from what Dr. Salim Ali has written about vultures and how they feed and all. Probably there is no apt description anywhere as what Salim Ali has said in his handbook on special and vultures. And well, carrying on that and. Uh, We've, we've we've got a lot to we got lots to do with you. We've got lots to do with the RSPB. I don't see Veena here, but Ashish Pitti has been somebody who's probably, I mean, Salim Chow would be very proud of you, Ashish. Give us a few, give us a aspect of what your relationship was and what you're doing right now. Ashish Pitti is a fantastic documenter of birds. As a, those who know him will confirm. Ashish. Ashish, are you on mute? I saw you just now. Neha, do you see Ashish? He's there. Maybe you want to question. Um, Ashish. Okay, get yourself uh, organized. Uh, Trevor, just a couple of sentences with you and your wobblers. One minute, you're on mute, that Trevor. Trevor Price. The wobbler man of the world. Uh, I didn't actually expect to uh, talk. I've really enjoyed listening to everyone else's talks. I <clears throat> I met Sally Mali like three times, and uh, the first time I was an 18-year-old who walked into a BNHS and said, "Can I bird ring?" And I don't think without Sally Mali there, they would have just say, "Go away." And I think my most impressive thing about him was that he just cut through the crap. Uh, he said, you know, he just saw something in me and said, yeah, go and join the bird ringing camp at Point Calamere. I think one thing I would like to say, though, is I think, you know, we, we should remember J.C. Daniel as well, because I think uh, he was a really good facilitator of what Salim Ali wanted to do. Uh, I don't know what else I could say. Oh, I do have one other thing I wouldn't mind saying, which is, you know, his book is great. It's one of the few books I've read like more than twice. And uh, when I teach, I still pull out his statement about wildlife conservation. So this is what he said. I don't know if many of you know this. For me, wildlife conservation is for down-to-earth practical purposes. This means, as internationally accepted, for scientific, cultural, aesthetic, recreational, and economic reasons. And sentimentality has little to do with it. I think that really is a beautiful statement about the importance of conservation. And uh, although I've ever met him three times, I still rank him as one of the greatest people I've ever met. Thank you. Wonderful, Wonderful Trevor. Um, we have, uh, you know, we have both Deepak Apte and Bivash uh, Pandav here with us. Deepak Apte will be looking after one of the most important uh, uh, BNHS projects now, the Central Asian Flyway, working with BirdLife International. I don't know if Veena is here, uh, Deepak, but between you and Veena, if you would just speak to us. Uh, Deepak has been shepherding the BNHS for a long while, and Bivash Pandav, who has been with the Wildlife Institute for the last 28 years, will be shepherding it soon after. So, Deepak, the mic is yours. Yeah. Thank you, Bitu. Uh... I was probably one of the unfortunate person who never get a chance to meet Dr. Salim Ali in person. Uh, though I have read uh, most of his books uh, with great interest. I think his writing is phenomenal. I had never seen such a, a crisp and articulated writing uh, in natural history as uh, he has written most of his books. Uh, the only tribute we can pay to him is continue his legacy. <clears throat> and one of the most uh, favorite program, as I know, uh, of Dr. Salim Mali was bird migration and bird ringing. And in last uh, uh, eight to 10 years, uh, we are reviving Pan-India bird ringing and color flagging program. And with our, uh, you know, revival of Bharatpur Center, uh, with a new bird ringing center, center in Bihar, uh, we are hoping to continue that legacy of understanding bird migration and saving uh, the key habitats for these migratory birds. Uh, so all I can say is that 
we all at dnhs are proud of its association he is in our dna salim ali is in our dna of dnhs and all employees of dnhs and the only tribute we can pay him is to uh, really further his uh, vision uh, that conservation must be science based and that's something we uh, work hard to do for uh, it's been pleasure and privilege for 28 years been associated with society and central asian flyway is of course going to be a flagship program of vnhs and we hope uh, that over time uh, what salim ali dreamed about migratory birds will be un- able to unravel uh, absolutely fantastic uh, you know mysteries of bird migration uh, across the central asian flyway uh, bitu thank you back thank to you thank you thank you deepak uh, bivash i think we have bill back again bill third time lucky come on speak to us my word can't, i can't believe that from the from from where in the world have we collected such beautiful human beings and all like i said like iron filings to a magnet just the name dr salim ali bill i don't see you i did see you for a flash but uh, okay we'll give you more than just a minute or so bill we we've, we've got time still we we've got another half an hour where we can speak and we can chat informally but uh, Oh lord is i think he is there you we need yeah he is him. there yeah. but i can't see I can him see, i can see i can see him i well can 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 you can you request him to speak yeah, i can i can see him certainly is there <laughs> write a little note because he is not yeah, uh, responding yeah, i'll send him a message yeah. let's uh, call on ashish pitti to come back okay yes i think ashish come on there you go you're looking <laughs> nice and full like the thinker He says he's the flower pecker between the raptors. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Ashish. Good evening, everyone. There's such a lo- uh, lovely collection of people here. So I came to Dr. Salim Ali through his writing primarily, but I did meet, had the great honor of meeting him a couple of times in the BNHS. And when timidly I went into the secretary's room, he was sitting at this imposing desk. And after a few minutes, he started tapping his fingers on the armchair. And I knew that my time was up and I had to come away. But, you know, uh, I really admire his fabulous uh, writing and his lucid and euphonic prose and his love for uh, large and loud motorcycles racing across Europe to be in time for the inauguration of the IOC in Helsinki on his, uh, I think, maybe a Harley or something. and um, you know the style and quality of his prose and the and the detailed studies that he did of all the areas which nobody had done up till then walking across india perhaps uh, the only indian to have walked across india so many times and uh, those meticulous persistently meticulous notes of his and diaries in long hand they are all there in the um, nehru uh, memorial museum i think in delhi and uh, his the way he maintain his personal notes giving a page to every bird and chronologically uh, recording what he saw uh, i took a leaf from that and did that myself and um, it was not just birds his notes were full peppered with the names of local people and whom he met and where he went and um, he spoke for the local guys also and uh, i admired the great personal touch he gave to everything that he was involved in whether it was tightening the strap on a camel's pack or whether it was writing his final notes and dotting the i's and uh, i think the finest bird book in india for introducing to uh, people to birding is his book of indian birds there's no better a better book cannot be written because to identify birds that is the only way not through plates and photographs and his uh, autobiography is among the finest in the world i have read several but you know to uh, write so beautifully in a slim volume of such a long life that to at the end of his life is quite phenomenal uh, finally uh, i i was i happened to be there at one momentous occasion in the bnhs when he received the 1983 award from ed mccray and uh, to my great uh, astonishment nobody had a camera on that day but me so i got the honor to take that picture and you showed it a little while ago ultimately in him i saw a collectedness that uh, spoke from the depth of his experience and the solitude of silent spaces 
and the wisdom from his uh, travels that soaked into him. I think that's what he shared through his writings and through his work with everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ashish. Thank you. Thank you. We've got a lot to do. Each one of us has got to remember that we've got to continue building the BNHS and we build it through knowledge. We build it through relationships. We build it through the ethics that was there. No wrong stuff. I'm not even going to mention Minot Hagen right now. You know, but the fact is, let's <laughs> let's see. Let, Bill, if if you please, 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 Bill, come on. We want to hear your voice. And uh, if we don't hear Bill, then Vivash, would you take over? I'll be away from the from the mic from the from the computer for another three or four minutes. Uh, after which uh, we will hear Devi Goenka as well. But uh, Bill. Counting, Bill, one, two, three, Bill. Oh, my word, we've been watching you. What a wonderful man, Bill Harvey, but technology being what it is, what to do. Vivash, are you there? Good evening. Yes, Everyone. yes, take, yes, yes. Just to us for two or three minutes. And after that, they yeah, since go over. This morning, actually, we've been looking only at Tiger Pagmu. Evening, which I did, I was accompanying one That's of the right. members of BNH, Dr. Vita Krishnan, and we went on a very nice short sweet walk along a river and the Himalayan foothills. So we saw slaty back folktales which have come down uh, now. And then we have been waiting to hear these mortal wood owls, uh, this lovely, beautiful. But uh, the owls disappointed us today and we couldn't, we are yet to hear them. Uh, and all of you, what I assure you is that we'll keep BNHS flag uh, flying high and uh, we'll always try, try our best uh, to live up to the expectations what people have been expecting from us and we'll try our best to do as much as possible. Thank you. Bill, would you like to speak now? Bill Harvey, please go ahead. Uh, Bill Harvey, please, would you like to speak now? We're waiting for you to speak. Say a little louder, maybe. Uh, Bill Harvey, would you please speak now? We're all waiting for you. Well, I think Bill is we can see you, Bill. Oh, Lord. I suggest we go to the next speaker. Yeah, well, um, I, Bill, I'm just hoping that he will speak because Bill has been a part of the history of the BNHS and birding and everything else. But if that's not to be, then we'll do this again and again. So... Uh, We'd like to invite Mr. Devi Goenka, the Secretary of BNHS, to please speak to us, particularly about his vision for conservation for BNHS. And um, uh, as we started off by saying, conservation was all Dr. Ali was about. So we'd love to hear a little bit about your association with Dr. Ali, as well as your vision for conservation for BNHS. Devi, please unmute yourself. Thanks, Neha, and thank Bitu for organizing this. I actually met Dr. Salim Ali in the Honda House, I think sometime in the mid 70s. I used to come and volunteer with the WWF, who were then located on the second floor of Honda House. And Lakumar Kachar, who was a dear friend of mine, introduced me to Dr. Salim Ali one afternoon. And I think somehow Dr. Salim Ali and I hit it off very well from, from the word go. He could somehow sense that I was committed to conservation. I was really interested in doing something to help protect the environment. And I fortunately, through all my interaction with him, was never ever on the receiving end of his harsh tongue. You know, he could be very cutting when he wanted to be. He had a wonderful sense of humor. And I will tell you one incident that took place uh, at one of our managing committee meetings at the BNHS. They used to get quite stormy and tempestuous at times, and very often harsh words were exchanged. 
And during one of these uh, occasions, I noticed Dr. Salim Ali sitting there with a smile on his face. So after the meeting got over, I asked him, I said, sir, how come, uh, you know, uh, you were so peacefully enjoying this meeting and smiling? So he said, you know, baby, uh, when all these things start happening and I don't want to be part of it, I just turn off my hearing aids and I can sit through this and smile and watch all the antics going on without hearing the words. So I really thought that was really very humorous on his part. Another incident I would like to recall is, you know, we were in Delhi. Uh, there was a youth program being organized by us in Delhi on in on our centenary year in 1983. And one of the BNHS members landed up to meet Dr. Salim Ali on the new motorcycle. And much to our horror, Dr. Salim Ali wanted to hop on the bike and go for a ride just uh, the evening before we were supposed to have a huge meeting with the Prime Minister of India at that kind of time. And with great difficulty, we managed to persuade him not to go motorcycle riding in Delhi on that particular day. Another humorous incident I recall is when we went birding with Dr. Salim Ali. There was a camp at the NDA, National Defense Academy in Pune, organized by the World Wildlife Fund. And all the army officers and cadets were all gaga about bird watching and being with the great man. And, you know, very often people would just point out a bird to him and say, Sir, what is that bird? What is that bird? And they were quite frustrated when Dr. Salim Ali didn't pop out an instant answer. And, you know, after that birding experience was over, he turned around and looked very sorrowfully at me and he said, you know, baby, this is no way that one can identify birds. You can't just point out a bird for half a second and say this is so and so. You have to look at it carefully and you have to look at the distinguishing features and so on. And then only can you say with any certainty uh, what that bird is. And very often when I went birding with Dr. Salim Ali, he would turn around and say, you know, Devi, this is probably so-and-so bird. He would very often be unwilling to commit himself 100% unless he was absolutely sure. Now, let me talk about conservation. I think Dr. Salim Ali, if you read some of the papers that were published in JBNHS in the 50s and 60s and so on, would write about his trip. And I remember reading a paper he wrote, which was published in JBNHS, JBNHS on his trip to Kashmir. And if you look at that report that he wrote, it is probably the same kind of report I would have written 20, 30, 40 years ago if I had done the same trip. And he believed, he had the conviction in saying what he wanted to say. He spoke very clearly. He was not scared about putting on paper what he wanted to say. And I think uh, the great part about Dr. Salim Ali is he was able to get so many things done on the conservation front when he was actively involved with the BNHS. We have uh, Bharatpur Bird Sanctuary. We have the Karnala Bird Sanctuary. We have so many other examples where Dr. Salim Ali's intervention and at the highest level led to even the protection of Silent Valley and so on. And I think this is the legacy of the BNHS that I would like as the Honorary Secretary to revive. I would like our membership to be actively involved with uh, the BNHS. And in fact, I thank all of you for being part of this program. And I look forward to having many, many more such interactions with all of you. And let's get BNHS back on the conservation agenda. Let's get our membership back actively involved in the activities of the BNHS. And God bless Dr. Salim Ali. Thank you. Thank you, Devi. Uh, it's been nothing other than handshake and a hug. Dildamas, all, all of us over here, you know, we should do this more often. The pandemic has come around and it has caused havoc across the country, but it has also given us an opportunity to unite in ways we may not have been able to. One of the things that uh, will be part of the, the NHS's focus now will be the baseline data that we've gathered is invaluable, more invaluable now than it ever was, given the pace at which the destruction that we see of the ecosystems is taking place. There is, uh, there is enough evidence now to know that it's not just a question of uh, carbon going up into the atmosphere. It's not just a question of water shortages. Uh, a week ago, a report that came out squarely pinned the wildlife trade and the loss of ecosystems as a key driver of the next pandemics that are going to arrive, possibly between 30 and 60,000 different viruses, which have far more destructive capacity than this. So in a sense, our 
mission has been set out for us. The baseline data has been created. We are at that fork in the road where we have to explain the BNHS is eminently qualified now. We will not be rabble rousing, street fighting people. We will rely on science and we will rely on conservation and we will speak softly. As uh, Desmond, Bishop Desmond Tutu said, don't raise your voice, improve your argument. And the fact is that if we improve our argument through solid science, married to the heart that exists in all of us and our staff and our scientists, I see no reason, Tara, that we wouldn't be able to actually sit at the apex of, how should I call it? It's not, it's not some kind of place that people will appoint the BNHS. We have to assume a leadership position. And that will come by us speaking the truth without malice. We should be able to speak to everybody. We should be able to draw people in and we shall. I don't know if uh, there, there, we've got 15 minutes more for those of us who have not spoken and who are part of this. I, I would, Neha, I wouldn't like to cut the guillotine down right now. Uh, I, I can't see if everybody just put your, yeah, Ashok Kuthari, come on. The man, the historian of the Bombay History Society, Natural History Society, please, Ashok. Yes, thank you, Bitu. I will tell about two good qualities of this great man. We were at Panchmedi in the Rosen BNHS lecture, and Dr. Salim Ali was to inaugurate Satpura Park. He had asked the forest department to take all the 40 members of BNHS. They will like to come with me. So we all were taken. It was a difficult trek, but he was walking with the help of Gulas Rane. So there was the same day a cow was killed by a tiger, so we were not allowed to go a little further. But he noticed Bogarvilia is everywhere and he called Chief Wildlife Warden of Madhya Pradesh, the first you remove this. And again, again he told and they were removed. That was Dr. Salim Ali. Then Dr. Ashok Nanavati used to examine him whenever he was not well. One day he called me that you go and examine him at Pali Hill because I am not able to go there. But don't examine like a general practitioner. He wants system, very systematic examination. I went there, he lied down, opened his mouth, showed his tongue, indicated for the pressure, pulse, then percussion, auscultation, and raised his shirt for abdomen exam examination. Twice I went there in that putting light bungalow at Pali Hill. He was very systematic, but he had great faith in Dr. Ashok Nanavati. So I was told that don't prescribe anything. Just examine and let us know. <laughs> and Sarah was his like secretary. Always he was helping him. And I was Sarah's doctor. And whenever Sarah wanted some money, not for his pan-chewing habit, but for giving <laughs> education to somebody, granddaughter or some other. So, used to go to Salim Ali, Dr. Salim Ali, and Dr. Salim Ali immediately used to help him. That was his kindness. But always he was saying that Sarah should not spit anywhere. He was not spitting, but all the time he was chewing palm. And then we were in National Park because on the periphery some sterculia rents were cut. We were there, we took the photograph, Dr. Salim Ali was to come next day. Me, Pipa, Mukherjee, and Dr. Das um, Gupta went there. We told him he was quite disturbed. Afterwards, I gave him one orange. He removed the pill and asked her to make a small pit and bury there. He was so particular that nothing should be thrown here and there. So this are the few instances, but I had chance to bring out the very popular book, Salim Ali's India in 1996, time of centenary. And recently I translated a book of Indian birds into Gujarati, which has become very popular in Gujarat. Nearly most of the copies are sold out. And I had a chance to see how nicely he described the birds, different parts and his language, everything nobody can 
right like dr salim ali thank you very much thank you very much ashok is there anybody else who would like to say anything i mean uh, yes please parvesh you are another one of those who has been there forever with us yes hi parvesh pandey uh, hello everyone uh, my association with dr salim ali right from my student days in 1978 till the time he passed away in 19 uh, 1978 to 1987 i remember that and i had several 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 locations to be with him uh, through the nature club i was very lucky that shama fateh ali used to organize walks with uh, salim saab into the national park he came to the college he inaugurated the course that i was running and one sentence that i remember very well he said parvish don't wait to become an expert start sharing your knowledge from whatever you know from now itself which was a great thing i think and then several occasions when i could go and meet him at the bombay yacht club when he used to be there i was a volunteer uh, during the centenary celebrations and all these moments are so 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 important for me and this is too good and thank you uh, everyone for joining here it's a great privilege to see uh, oldies like me and youngsters like me too uh, who have gathered here for this program thank you so much Oh, Parvesh, you're a wonderful guy. Lima, Lima, come on. Any, this is open house now. Lima, please. Lima, you're on mute. Okay. Yes. Now Hello we can everyone. hear. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, yeah. So, I uh, joined the BNH in, in July 1985. meeting salim ali going birding with him my first uh, interaction with him was at the sanjay gandhi national park with mr daniel and tara and mr naik and you know he he um so i'm i'm as dumb i'm i'm deaf as a dodo but uh, with salim ali that won't work because he will not let you in on an identity of a bird without you first hearing it So he asked me to close his eyes, and he said, "Listen, and then see." So he expected me to see it with my eyes closed, because that's that is how Salim Ali watches birds. Wow. So that was my first learning with him. I um, couldn't identify this bird; I'd never heard it before. It was a shama in the in the Sanjay Gandhi National Park. But there, then on, I even even today when I watch birds, it's more of a hearing. and then and then seeing and identifying so uh, that's the first lesson i learned from salim ali there after there have been many 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 occasions uh, right from when he was at the royal yacht club and in a performance at the vikan bhavan and so the too many um, memories crowding me but uh, what i take take back from this band and 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 the and the um, <clears throat> and the profession that he has given me this is dedication to his craft his diligence to achieve perfection which i continue to do and continue to practice and his meticulous note taking he said uh, don't ever rely on your memory your memory is the most infallible and always have an ubiquitous notebook which i still do i'm a compulsive note taker thank you salim ali for the for the love for wi- for wildlife for love for conservation and for the for setting up this highest uh, you know benchmark you it it uh, you can't break that gra- glass ceiling that this man has set forth for all of us so uh, fun it's so lovely to see everybody here and memories and coffee talking we need to really really up our game and as tara said Uh, and we to you to uh, science is the only thing that matters and so let's all uh, you know take our science forward be rooted in science and conservation thank you so much we love the bnhs we always there for you guys so you just have to what just have to reach out to us and thank you so much wonderful there are so many others why don't you switch on your videos all of you who can so that somebody some magical person maybe uh, 
I don't know who. Divya Shri, could it be you? Could it be Raju Kasambe? Just so that we can just take a few screen grabs. Debi, put, on your, put on your videos, all of us. So at least let's, let's have that memory of this. And we'll do more of these, you know. Not very frequently, I promise. But the fact is that let's, let's everybody get our videos on. Parvish, you were speaking just now. Get your video on, Usha. Come on, where are you? I see so many others. You know, Almitra, you too. Video on, Aman, you, Ashish. Maybe <laughs> your video is not on. Hi, Isaac, Hi. is it? Isaac, are you there? Isaac. Hmm. Okay. Anyway, so here we are. Somebody, somebody with the technical knowledge, take a screenshot and let's share this with our own people. Put it on the website and let the doors be open. Yeah. Nice to hear Subramaniam talk. Yes, please, Subhu. Will you? Will you please? I was just going to call his name because I just saw him right now. Wonderful. To speak. Uh, wow. Uh, it's, it's so nice to be here amidst you all. It's such an amazing uh, uh, evening. Yes. Listen to all of you. Can you hear me? I don't know. Yes, yes, we can. Can, can you request you? others to mute okay. their mics, please? Can everybody else mute their mics? Yeah. Uh, three instances. Uh, one is that um, I joined BNHS interviewed by Salim Ali. I worked with Point Kalima, Bharatpu, and Harike on the Bird Migration Project as a hydrobiology project. And also uh, uh, at Bharatpu, two instances. Uh, once uh, we had uh, gone out for uh, on a trail near Sapanmori, where, uh, of course, uh, uh, the forest department staff were there, Boluka, Sohanlal, and others, and Sohanlal asked. Uh, there, Dr. Sabo, uh, Eagle Consi Eagle. And uh, Dr. Salim Ali looked at him even before anybody could uh, say, I just blurted out that is the greatest spotted eagle because we used to see that bird day in and day out. But Salim Ali looked, 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 looked at the bird for one full minute and turns to me to say, uh, Young man, you're right, but I wish I was as confident as you are. I took it as. <laughs> It could have been a compliment, but it took it as a slap. Second instance is that uh, that uh, 1981, there were 33 Siberian cranes. Probably one of the very few people have seen so many of them. And we are meeting, we are uh, chit-chatting at the palace grounds of Bharatpur Maharaja. At that time, he kept asking us what was our educational background. And I told him that I have a basic degree in agriculture, master's in entomology. Then he asked me, why are you wasting your time in my project? Then I told him, Dr. Sub, uh, I don't know what you are talking about. No, you have a degree in agriculture and master's in entomology. Why don't you combine your agriculture, birds, and uh, uh, insects and do your PhD? And of course, took you from a uh, session and also returned to the university to do my PhD in agricultural uh, ornithology. And uh, another thing I want to share is that uh, I retired in uh, 2018 from the Agricultural University. Uh, well, uh, that year, I redid the uh, Salim Ali's Mysore Bird Survey, which he did between 1939 to 1940, uh, visiting the same locations on the same dates, but after 78 years. Uh, it was kind of a tribute to him because I admired this person so much. And he was so influential in my life. Thank you very much. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Look at the people we've got. Pallav, Pallav Bagla is there. Prashant Mahajan, you're there. We've got we've got time. I mean, uh, those those people who have to go for dinner and things are welcome to go. But if we can shoot the breeze a little more, it'd be wonderful. The, the official program is over, but look at us. When are we going to meet like this again? I'm more so, sorry, sorry. Did I interrupt somebody? Uh, Pallav, would you like to take yourself off? Pallav Bagla is... You're, you're on mute, Pallav. Jojo is also here. Oh, Jojo is here as well. Raghu is here as well. Oh, Lord, there's so many of these screens. Yeah. Okay. So there's... It's open house. Just lovely, lovely, lovely to meet so many people with whom one has learned and walked on many occasions. And this is the power of technology and this is the power of Neha for having joined us together through technology. 
uh, the flock which we see here, I'm sure Dr. Salimari himself would have been very envious of this. Uh, I loved I loved bird watching at one point. Then I gave up because it's just too time consuming and it just makes you it just engulfs you into it. So, so then I went off to doing more science. And as they say, science and conservation go together. And my photography continues bit too. And I wish Dr. Salim Ali were here to see so many years later, so many people are gathering here with lovely memories. Thanks for making it happen, Bittu and Neha and Dilnawaz. Long, long years ago, we met. I, I'll tell you, Pallav, no. you're not getting, you're not getting off that easily because your science is going to come to use right now. We've got to change national policy using science. And you're one of the best spokespersons for science, not just to policymakers, but to people who can understand what you speak. So you're stuck with us. Uh, Tara, did I you? You were saying something. Uh, I don't know. Somebody I did interrupt. I'm sorry. Bit two. Yeah. Uh, this is Andy. Why? Somebody should talk about his sense of humor. He had such oh, a, Lord. Dr. Salim Ali had such a puckish sense of humor. Um, I think we should end on a lighter note and somebody may recount about his sense of humor. Um, about his science, his contribution, we've all said something and it's about personal anecdotes, which are always there. But if that other angle of him, the other aspect, his way of life. Hey, I would like to cite one very uh, jovial sentence that he said once to us. Uh, Parvish, have you been to the Gateway of India? And I said, yes. And then he said, have you seen the boys on girls? Uh, have you seen the girls on boys? <laughs> actually meant the bird skulls sitting on the floating boys. <laughs> he was, don't do the mistake, huh? he was like that. He was wonderful. He was just too wonderful. He was just too wonderful. Guy I'll share a couple of, uh, couple of yes. jokes if I may. Yes, please. Yeah. please. Yeah. One, we were at the Burubli National Park mm -hmm. and there were a bunch of young college students. And they were muttering to them to each other, is it Dr. Salim Ali? Is it not? Any? Finally, they decided it must be Salim Ali. So they came and said, Sir, can we have your autograph, please? So he said, Why? He says, uh, Are you, aren't you Dr. Salim Ali? And he said, No, I'm not. But I'll give you an autograph if you want. Then those, those students, didn't know whether to uh, take his autograph or not take or take the autograph of this old man. <laughs> then he chuckled and he said, okay. Oh, Lord. And, uh, once we were at Bharatpur, the two of us were sitting at a chai shop and the, some person came up and looked at uh, Salim Ali and said, are you a Parsi? So he said, no. Then he looked at me and said, are you a Bori? I said, no. <laughs> <laughs> and the greatest joke was a joke on Salim Ali. We were on the on the train to uh, to Bharatpur when the postmaster general was in the next bogey, and he came at some station and said to Salim Ali, "Sir, you are that firm, famous orthologist. He didn't say ornithologist, orthologist." I have a question to ask you. Salim Ali said, yeah, what is it? He said, sir, are your teeth real or false? <laughs> <laughs> Salim Ali, because you're so close to nature, he thought all your teeth, his teeth, but Salim Ali had two sets of totally false teeth. <laughs> and it was the only time I've heard Salim Ali not able to answer a question immediately. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord, oh, Lord. But, um, yeah. May Ready. I come in? <laughs> yes, please, Rajiv. Um, in Kana National Park, I took him out once um, and I was driving and he was sitting next to me and we went up on top overlooking into Balagat. The large male tiger sitting there looking at us. And he looked at us. So we, we just froze there and watched. After 15, 20 minutes, that tiger wouldn't even look back. He was just looking into gazing and 
they would turn back. And then he, Eddie turns around and tells me, Ranjit Singh, uh, this is a very, you know, that squeaky voice of his. Yeah. That, that's a very rude tiger. <clears throat> and uh, I think if we keep on sitting here, we'll be wasting our time. Let's go and do something else. So we went on. In Sakya Sagar, in the Shupuri National Park, he was in one room and I was in the other. And uh, a, a recess macaque. <laughs> Luckily, got into his room and not mine, and uh, ransacked through his place and tore off his nose. Oh well, I've never seen him anything. And then he turns around and says, "You know, <clears throat> so much like a human being, destroying <laughs> things." <laughs> and why? You know, they, he he was blaming them for being closer primates. You see, they're both primates. So he, he wouldn't blame an animal, but he was blaming human beings. He's so much like a human being. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. You know, one day, there was... Yeah, yeah, go, please go on, go on, go on. Uh, sorry, sorry. No, no, go no, no, on. Go, on, go on, go on, Ranjit, go on. I, I was just asking Joanna something, but go no, on. You see, one should have... One should have... Uh, uh, mentioned, I think, it, one of his pioneer work was of course, the birds of touch. And then uh, a few people realized that the first article that anybody bothered about on writing was in the wild asses. Uh, wild asses. And at the end of those two very, very, you know, pathfinding articles in the wild ass, because wild ass was nobody's animal. It was not a game animal. It was, a, it was an ass. And, but anyway, he wrote those articles. At the end, if you will notice, uh, uh, he says, the wild ass, last line of that, one of those two articles, the, the a wild ass, uh, uh, the meat is quite edible, but rather saltish. So I once accosted him, uh, 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 sir, did you eat it? He says, yes. Yes, of course I ate it. And uh, you must eat it, otherwise you won't. <laughs> How will you understand? Okay. <laughs> and uh, one day, one day, we were sitting there and, and we were talking and he says, look at these people talking about animals, about wildlife. Have they ever shot an animal? Have they ever eaten one? I never used to let him forget that. I said, you are one person. Uh, okay, he made the transition from uh, thing and much, much earlier than anybody else. But, you know, this inquisitiveness that, uh, you know, you must know everything about the thing, including eating it. Uh, wow. I could go on and on, but there are others who may. <laughs> yeah, know. yeah. One. How wonderful. How wonderful. You know, Feroza. Can, can, I, just, we, can I tell yeah, a story? Please. Yes, please, 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 please. We are waiting. Go ahead. I, I, I missed part of the end of uh, Ranjit Singh's, but I heard him talk about eating. So <clears throat> I was remembering the time when Ashish and I had the great privilege of showing Salam Ali our film that we'd made on the, um, Jakar the uh, not the Jakarna, the pheasant, the Dampfe from Nepal. And at the end of it, we waited with bated breath to hear some um, great words of wisdom from the man. And all we got was, he put his head on one side and he said, they're very good eating, you know. <laughs> oh, Jojo, that's that's Salim Ali, all right. Oh, that's Salim Ali. The other, when he went, when we first met him, was in Colombo, <clears throat> and he had many fans there. And there were some ladies who said, "Salim Ali, sir, your books are like the Bible to us." And he looked at them for a while, and he said, "Well, I hope not, because I believe not many people read the Bible these days." <laughs> Oh, oh, that was another good one to remember. He is really wonderful. You know, I have one, one small little thing. You know, he was, he'd been just gone through radiation at the Jaslok Hospital, and he was being wheeled out. We were wheeling him out gently back to his room, and uh, he he gently, uh, you know, he looked up at me and said this, and I, I my heart sank. I, you know, I, I said, now what? So he said, 
don't look at my face. Look at the ceiling. They badly need an editor. So it was written W-E-L hyphen C-O-M-E in bold letters, you know. He was unputdownable. That man was just too beautiful. He still lives right here inside me. I can say one thing. Yes, please, please. We were in Bharatpur way back several years ago. That's we Robert Grubb. Yes, yes. At Shanti Kutir, we were doing bird ringing in the morning about 8 or 9 o'clock in the shadow of that building. And we were collecting birds, I mean, holding birds and measuring them and putting rings and everything. So that time we saw two, three jeeps coming at the gate. And some people got down. One very big, important official was walking like this. And they all came behind him, interpretation, and then they went very close to Dr. Salim Ali, and then he introduced himself, and the director of family planning. Salim Ali looked up at him and said, well, we have no job for you here. <laughs> so let's crest fallen and he walked up. Oh, Lord. Bharatpur is, and Shanti Kutir was such a beautiful place for him, you know. He sat over there having lunch, uh, you know, and uh, it was Bhalu's father who had cooked this wonderful meal, and there was somebody who was sitting on the table next door continually interrupting him. And when he allowed him to come close to him, the man told Dr. Salimini, now I know the secret to your longevity. You like this chana. So, I, it wasn't a withering look, but it was certainly a put down. He says, yes, but you've got to eat it for 82 years to, for it to be effective, you know. So he, he's just, Dindamas, you, you've got so many other things and we've got, I think, um, anybody else? Dr. Erich wants to speak. Yes, Erich, please, please, Erich. Erich, are you on mute? Erich, art thou on mute? Uh, no, Erich, we can't hear you. Uh, can you uh, can you hold up a little sign to say unmute or something? Or he is not on mute, but we can't hear him. Oh, is that right? What a pity! Uh, blue, please. My un yes, no, yes. Uh, Anne's not feeling too well, but she asked me to, to, to mention a few things. But, but one was that, that in, his, in, in, in his later years, they were both members of the um, National Board for Wildlife, as it was called then, or the Indian Board for Wildlife. And he didn't like having his hearing aid on all the time. So he used to look at the agenda items, and then he would make an absolutely 100% sit next to him. And he'd say, okay, you just have to tap my knee when I have to put my hand up and agree. Oh. And because he knew, I mean, they all knew that in the, the, the prime minister would, would really value his opinion. Nobody Fakram came up when all these really important decisions, she would tap his knee and he would put his arm up and say, I agree. I think that's a wonderful idea. And then put it down again. <laughs> oh, Lord, what a man. What a man. And that was right to the end until his last meeting. You know, he said, I will, you know, we've got to support all these things. Marvelous. Incredible. Wonderful. Wonderful. Mm. Devi, you, 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 you were speaking earlier about the Salim Ali Nature Conservation Fund, you know, and I, I recall many times people speaking nice things about him. And I'm serious. He would say that all your words are very well, but a nice fat check would be better, you know. So, Dilemas, you shepherded the, 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 the Salim Ali Nature Conservation Fund for so long. Why don't we rejuvenate it? Why don't we use it now? Why don't we use it for the things that should be done? It was a very small fund. Very, yeah, very it small. was. Yeah, it was. And Salim was quite hopeless at asking for money. I remember 
organizing lunch at Bombay gym for him and Kartike and I had briefed him, you have to ask for money. And uh, I was kicking him under the table, but he never got the hint and never asked for the money. <laughs> Kartike never gave any money. Uh, Kartike should have given it without being asked. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, but, uh, you, I uh, think you've yeah. got uh, you, you all have raised a lot of funds in the past. It's just a matter of allocation yes. to uh, SANCF. Yes, to... yes, we we're thinking of that. And Dildamas, I think that uh, many of you, you know, Feroza, you so many people, Parvesh, we've got to we've got to bring back. We're not just a fraternity, you know. We're a continuum, you know. So. In a, in a sense, Blue, we've got to look at what's happening around the country, the Wildlife Institute, we see what's happening, we see what's happening with the lack of understanding that every forest, every wetland, every grassland, every it is an infrastructure. It is not an impediment to infrastructure. That's why I was saying to Pallav that we have to bring science in and explain that everything sits on the bedrock of an ecologically stable foundation. So let's just put our shoulders to the wheel. We don't, you know, tell them us. Yeah, I think it's uh, apart from the science of it, yeah. what uh, kind of policy decisions are being taken are really shocking on the yeah. amendment to the environmental impact assessment. Uh, thing. And I think BNHS has given birth to so many, many, many conservationists across in so many different institutions now. I think uh, the need for networking between yeah. the BNHS and these others, where the NHS does not relinquish its scientific knowledge, but uses that uh, yeah. and is rigorous, as rigorous as Salim Ali himself would have been with, uh, with what is being said, that there is, uh, and I don't know whether you all did this yesterday in the, uh, for the, I saw the letter with the NHS had written. I don't know how many uh, sign-ons you had, but now when I'm working with the organic farming and the ecological farming uh, groups and so on, uh, with my own trust, we have 105 partner organizations. Uh, mm. So 115 rather. So mm. I think it's time for the conservation movement to consolidate. I, I do think so. I, I think it's necessary for the organizations like WWF and BNHS. I see no reason why we shouldn't work in partnership or WPSI or WCT or CAT. Or, I mean, we, we don't have to create a body like CII or something like this, but let's just be united on issues and let's make sure that we are heard now because we've got about 10 years. Seriously, these 10 years are going to be the tipping point. And the BNHS really has to assume a leadership position. Devi has got a very huge task ahead of him right now. Let's hope that we can do it. Neha, are you prepared? You're rolling up your sleeves for the conservation department. We want to make it a full-fledged full -fledged department of the BNHS. So, I do not have sleeves. They've been rolled up a long time ago. Thank you. All right. Good, good, But, good. you know, I really, um, you know, I just want to say as a, as somebody obviously who hasn't met uh, Dr. Ali, it was really nice to hear so many different things about obviously somebody who knew how to live his life. So clearly these stories are not just about birds or not just about identification of birds, but really somebody who understands that conservation is about everything, emotion, sentiment, writing, perfect sentences as, Bik as Bikram called it. Yeah. And riding motorbikes occasionally. So, I mean, I, I've taken a lot of notes. You know, I think I'd like to write something myself on all that I've heard. So, thank you so much, everybody. And uh, there's a, a short uh, video clip that my colleague uh, Devishri has compiled. And I'd request uh, Priyanka to please um, play that. It's just an amalgamation of uh, some of the documentaries made on Dr. Ali, which we would like to play. Lovely. Sure. 
and put it on presentation mode so we can see it full screen maybe. Now give me a second. So far, I can only see us. It's coming. It's coming. Uh, we'll wait. We'll wait. I think the whaling widow was my favorite story of the evening. Closely, closely in context with uh, Dr. Vibhu Prakash saying he was scared of Dr. Ali. Like Dr. Vibhu Prakash is quite uh, intimidating himself. <laughs> but I think, uh, I think it's coming. Maybe it's, is it working on thing? Yeah, can you tell me? Uh, is the voice yes, of... we can hear, we can hear. Yes, it's working. Thank you. At 87, Dr. Sali Pali is the grand old man of Indian ornithology. His career spans over half a century. Salim Ali has done more than anyone living to set the study of India's bird life on a scientific footing, and more too, to save the country's wild places. From the Himalayas to Cape Comorin, from the Great Ram to the marshes of Bharatpur, in more senses than one, all is Salim Ali's India. Last year I didn't see them, but uh, usually it has it. Um, yeah. What were you saying about the river bed? This diaper grass has grown recently, and uh, black-throated beaver, beaver nested last Is year. That, sir? Yeah. This year? This year we haven't seen. For the bird watcher, India is a paradise. In the 3,000 kilometers from north to south, as much as from London to the central Sahara, there's every kind of country, from frozen peak to humid forest. I don't know if anybody else has the problem, but it's uh, not quite playing right. Birds. So, yeah, all the year. But in winter, migrants come in from the north. Such coming. Maybe we can skip to the last portion of the movie. No, not. Salimali's around. Other people now think India's natural history a proper subject for study and inquiry. But uh, Belinda says she saw seven. Yes, that's uh, the castle over there, sitting on the stump. Yes, 
He lives in Bombay, a raucous city, shrill with the bustle of commerce. <laughs> is home too to the Bombay Natural History Society and Sali Mali's its president. He's been involved with it for much of his and its life. He still goes twice a week to the society's offices adjoining the elegant Prince of Wales Museum. Founded in September 1883, it's a national society, despite its name. It's among the most respected of its kind in Asia. Members are drawn from all over India and from overseas. They have access not only to a historic collection of specimens, but can use this extensive library. They started their own journal in 1886. In its pages, there's not only a fund of original observations, but a social history from a natural history point of view. The first issue records the society's founding by seven gentlemen interested in natural history proposed to meet, exchange notes, get interesting specimens and otherwise encourage one another. <laughs> I apologize if that didn't play properly for everyone, but we'll upload it on our YouTube channel. So, everyone so I think we stay on here till tomorrow. Um, I just wanted to say that uh, what Dr. Ranjit Singh said about uh, patriotism is such a precious thing to hear you know, about how Salim Ali would work for the cause and not really talk about himself. That's really inspiring to hear. I would, you know, I'll remember that for all time. Yeah, wonderful, Neha, wonderful. Look, uh, Neha, you're on mute right now, but uh, I think all of us here owe the BNHS, every single one of our staff, our scientists, a debt of gratitude. They, they put this thing together, it was their idea. But, uh, we will have more of these. And I, Neha, I'll leave it to you to say good night to everybody on behalf of Dr. Salimali. And Bittu, Bittu, this Almitra Patel is not coming in. I, I've been, Almitra was there just now. I just waved to her and asked her. Is, is Almitra I there? Can... Hi there. I can I can unmute myself, but I can't start my video. Uh, don't worry. Then let's hear your voice. Let's hear your yes. voice. 
Yes. Oh. Uh, I owe so much the happiest years of my life uh, being the uh, honorary project officer of the Gear project with the Smithsonian and the BNHS. Yeah. With the, so many wonderful people. Uh, I, I would like to suggest that uh, some of the books which may not get reprinted, like Toby Hot's Grasses of Western India, I think uh, we should be able to put them up uh, on the net for free viewing. I'm sure their copyright or whatever has expired. So I'll be happy to uh, sponsor that. Yeah. How wonderful is that? That is wonderful because I think there could be nothing, no, no mission could be better than putting all our stuff down in cyberspace forever and ever and ever. I think there's a very major project already on right now. Deepak Apte was telling me about that and I think that uh, this would be a very, very valuable, very, very valuable indeed. Thank you. Saying something? I can see Farah. Farah wants, it's so good to hear you, Farah. Hi, hello everyone. Thank you for inviting, inviting people. I'm just barging in this meeting. Well, yeah, all our existence is because of Dr. Salim Ali. I mean, you know, it's because of and looking and in the well, yeah, habitats and for species conservation. Yeah, I mean, his legacy just stays on, and hope we can all take it to the end. The the the, the you could hear line, properly. I, I I can't hear. So Usha, could you hear clearly? No, there was, no. no but there was. But as, uh, yeah, I wish we could hear her properly. We couldn't well, listen, hear her at all, we'll we'll do this again. I think that we had more than six hundred people. You know, uh, as I said, iron filings to a magnet. Uh, all good things must come to an end. And I think that this evening is just the start of something. We'll use this technology to knit ourselves better, more, more strongly, more purposefully. And let's see where we go from there. Uh, I, I didn't hear Veena. I thought from, from BirdLife, uh, I thought he was coming on. But Prashant, you're here. I, I, between RSPB and BirdLife and WWF, and we really need to create a, a phalanx because the opposition is very united in greed. We've got to be united in purpose, and we'll we'll do so. We'll do so quietly, but we'll do so surely. Okay, uh, Neha, it's for you to say thank you to everybody. All right, and then we can close. Thank you to everybody, and also I feel the sparrow has not yet fallen. That's the sense I get from this room. And many thanks to all my colleagues. I haven't really done anything. They're, they're really the ones who've done everything. And many of us went um, for trails today as well, even though it is COVID and pandemic. And we've had, uh, you know, trails in every part of India almost um, planned uh, and implemented. And uh, it was a delightful evening. It was, it was actually exceeding you know, my expectations in terms of turnout as well. We still have 75 people online right now. We had more than 500 at one point. Uh, it's very inspiring for a young conservationist to hear all these stories. And I take great heart uh, with the idea of ecological patriotism. And I take great heart at the idea of doing something for the purpose rather than for the name. So thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. We are going to put this up on YouTube and we'll share the link with everyone and uh, I'll also try to put some meeting notes together because I think some of the memories are too precious to just be, you know, neglected and um, we hope to see you again. And thank you Bittu for anchoring so well. Thank you, Dr. Ranjit Singh. Thank you, Pallav.
Thank you all. Thank you all. Thank you for this wonderful evening. Once they said you the link. Now, hopefully, the link will come before we fix fire stick. Oh, it'll be that fast. Yeah. But who knows that the day is ending?